Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today I want to talk about single table inheritance. If you don't know what it is, you can do a quick Google, but I'm going to give you a brief explanation now, or even an example. Imagine the following scenario. You have a software that's used in a hospital, and the users can either be nurses or doctors. So how do you, um, how do you, how do you structure the database? Well, you can either create a separate table for doctors and nurses, even though that often makes things more complex, or you can have a single user's table and you can have a type column that's super common. So you can either be a doctor or a nurse. And in your app's business logic, you would have, you know, if blocks. So if this is a nurse, you want to do something. If this is a doctor, you want to do something else. And you would usually benefit of query scopes. And this is in the context of Laravel, excuse me you would benefit of query scope. So you could have a query scope called nurse, which would only return users that are nurses and one called doctor, which would only return users that are doctors. And I mean, it works well, but at some point it starts to get really complex. You have lots of if blocks checking if the user is a nurse or a doctor. If you want to add a third row, you would have to add if blocks for that as well. And what most people don't know is that you can have all of the records on the same table after all they are all users and you can use that type column or whatever column you have to have different objects on the same table so they would all be users but then you would have a doctor object and a nurse object and you could implement different behavior different methods all of that inside those objects and they would all still be on the user table for instance, um, here I have two guitars. I have this last bowl and I have this Stratocaster. Now, they're both guitars, right? Um, they all have six strings. They all have a fretboard. However, this one has a tremolo. It doesn't right now, but I could lift the bridge while this one has a fixed bridge. Um, if I were to restring this one, I would insert the strings from the back right here while on this one, I would put it through the bridge. So they are both guitars, but they're different. This is a guitar of type Stratocaster and this is a guitar of type Les Paul. I could, you know, I could use them to play different songs. So if I want to play, I don't know, Lady Love by Eric Clapton or Little Wing by Jim Hendrix, I would use this one if I want to play, I don't know, Guns N' Roses, I would use this one and they are in different tunings. So while they share the core, they are both guitars, they have different characteristics, they have things are done differently. So if I were to have a restring method, the implementation would have to be different for this one and for this one. And they have their differences. So I could um, have different tables, one for last poles and one for Stratocasters, but that doesn't really make sense. I could have a simple guitar stable and have their type on a column. So I would know whether it's a last pole or whether it's a Stratocaster. And you can go even further. You could have a, an instrument stable with the time. So this is a guitar, this is a keyboard, this is a piano, and so, so this is pretty much single table inheritance. I have two controllers here. One is for the AC, one's for the softbox. So they're both remotes. However, they function differently. They have the same shape, they have similar size, but they're different. And that's pretty much what single table inheritance is all about. It's about having all the records on a single table and then having a column that finds what they actually are. They are all users, but some are doctors and some are nurses. And that will, will help you recruit so much. So I've already talked enough. Let's go into um, VS Code and, and do some coding. Hey guys, welcome back to the video. You might see that I have a different scenario here, a haircut. And that's because this video is being recorded two days later. I'm just re-recording it actually with a new mic. Let's see if the audio quality is better. But anyway, I have this fresh Laravel application. The only thing I did was I added this type column to the user model. 
And we're going to have two types of users. We're going to have doctors and we're going to have nurses. And what differentiates them is the type column. So if I go into the user model, you can see that the only thing I did was uh, the type to fillable, but I can actually remove it. So let's remove it. And so what we want to do is we want to be able to fetch doctors and we want to be able to fetch nurses. So we, if we call all the nurses, we don't want to receive any doctor. The first, the most basic way to do this is to add a query scope. So we could add a scope doctor. Let's expect a builder here and we can say builder where type and we can say doctor, something like this. And let's add one for the nurses. So we can say scope nurse where type nurse, right? This, this is what we want. So if we go into our terminal, I'm going to open up Tinker and we say doctor equals, we can say user create name is going to be Mateus. Um, email is going to be Mateus at task.com. Password is going to be password and the type is going to be doctor. It's going to fail. That's because doc, I'm sorry, type is not in the fillable. Um, call. I'm going to re-add it just to show you guys this, but we're going to remove it later and you're going to know why. So let me reopen Tinker and rerun it. So we have a doctor. We have someone of the type doctor. Now let's create a nurse. So we can say user create name equals uh, John email equals John at task.com password equals password pretty standard and the type is going to be nurse. So we have a nurse and we have a doctor. If we do user all, we get all of the users. If we do user doctor get, we get only the doctor. And if we do user nurse get, we get only the nurse. So query scopes do work nicely for this, but once you start to start to need more flexibility and do different actions for nurses and doctors, and if you decide to add a third role, a third type, things just start to get messy because you still have the underlying user object for all of them. So the nurse is a user, the doctor is a user, and once you start to split behavior between types, your app starts to get really, really messy. And what some people do is they either create a separate model for each type or that adds complexity because you start having several tables that kind of look the same or you can add a bunch of if analysis to your methods and your controllers and it just gets messy. However, with single table inheritance, we can split those uh, records into different models. So we can have a doctor model for the doctors, a nurse model for the nurses, and they all share the same table. They are all users and they also extend behavior from the user class. So it's in fact, just like objected oriented um, inheritance. We can inherit things from the user model while having um, separate behavior on each of our children models. Let me show you guys how that works. So let me clear this, um, the database. Okay, we have a clear database. I'm going to get rid of all of this and I'm going to get rid of the type as well. And I'm going to start by creating um, a doctor model. So you can see doctor, namespace, uh, models, class doctor. And instead of extending the model class, it is going to extend the user class. So we already have the user class. What we're going to do is we want this model to fetch only doctors. So let's go and, um, whoops, I refreshed it. <laughs> I'm going to create a, a, a doctor. So let's say this is a doctor. The only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to change the type from the simple string to the fully qualified namespace to this class. I'm going to say app models doctor. So, uh, oh yeah, we removed it from the fillable. Let's set it again. Okay, so I have a doctor. However, if I run doctor all, whoops. If I run doctor all, no such table doctors. So what we got to do is instead of defining the table here, Let's just define it on the parent model. So we can go here and say table is users. 
and this doctor model is going to inherit this from the parent model. Let's try and run this again. Okay, we got a doctor. Now let's create a nurse. So I'm going to create a nurse, but I'm going to pass the fully qualified namespace again, even though it doesn't exist yet. And if we run Dr. All, you can see that we're getting the nurse, even though we don't want to get it. Okay, so in order to only fetch the doctors, we want to use a global scope. It's just like a query scope, but applied to all of the queries. Um, if you've ever used soft delete, that's a global scope. To do this, we can call a function called booted, like this. Oh, sorry, it's a static function, like this. So public static function booted, and here we want to call, we want to add a global scope. We can say static, add global scope. Oh, we got some, some <laughs> auto completion. And we can say doctor, that's the name of the scope, and we can pass in a closure. Um, when you're adding global scopes, you can either pass a closure as a second argument, or you can pass a class. For this, I'm going to go with a closure. So we can pass a closure and we can say computer where the type must be the fully qualified namespace of the class. So we can say self class. Now let's run this again. Now you can see that we only got the doctor, even though we were getting um, all of them. If, if we remove this and we call this again, let me refresh Sinker, we get all the users. If we have our global scope here, we only get the the underlying one. So I'm sorry, the, the doctor type. Let me refresh this and we only get the doctor. Okay, so that's, we, we're halfway there. Let's go back to the user and we're going to remove the type. We don't really want this to be accessible through the fillable. All right, so let's go back and let's try and create a doctor. So um, let me create this. I'm going to remove the type. And instead of calling the user class, I want to call, let me change the Matthias and line doctor like this. I want to call the doctor class instead of calling the user class, the user model. So let's say app models doctor. And you can see that we get an error saying that the type was no and it can't be no. So what we need to do now is we need to add some actions to the saving event. If you don't know what eloquent events are, I'm going to leave a link on the description as well. Um, if you've ever used observers, they're pretty much the same, but instead of having an observer, I'm just going to have this inside the class. So I can create a static function called boot. We got to call parent boot because this is an inherited method. And then we can say static when save, when, when creating actually. And the biggest difference between creating and saving is that creating is only called when the model was first created. If you are updating a model, creating is not going to be called while saving is going to be called. So once it's creating, we can pass a callback and we get a doctor. We can say doctor, force fill, so we can ignore the fillable array and we can say type equals self class. Now let's try and create this again. And you can see that now we've gotten a doctor back. So let's do the same for our nurse class. I'm going to copy this class. Let me create a nurse class. So nurse, and I'm going to remove all the instances of doctor to nurse like this. And if we go and we call up models nurse all, you can see that we only got the, the model that was a nurse. We didn't get any doctors. So we have, we already have something working. Um, if I want to add some specific behavior to the nurse model, I can, and it won't affect the doctor class. Now, if I want to add something to the user class, I can, and it will affect both the doctor and the nurse classes because they inherit the user. They extend the user class. It's their parent. So this is already going to get you very far. Um, if you have this implemented correctly, you can treat nurse and doctor as completely different um, entities, while you can still treat them as the same if you look for the user type. So you can have some methods that accept a nurse, and in this case, if they pass a doctor, it won't work, but you can also have methods that accept a user, generic methods that can be applied to both nurses and doctors, 
and whatever new types you want to add. And this is pretty extensible as well. If you want to add a new type at some point, you can just, you know, you can really, you can just create a new class and do the same thing. Okay, now we can also refactor this a little bit. We don't need this behavior on this class. So let's get rid of it for the nurse and for the doctor. Um, let me remove it. Okay, now we have, you know, just a class really doesn't have anything on it. We can add those methods to the user class. And uh, let's try changing nurse for model. So now bear with me, this won't work. I'm going to show you guys in a second. Let's clear this. If I try to get all the nurses, you can see that I'm getting an empty array. Same for doctor. And that's because self and static are different. If we want to get the fully qualified namespace for the class that inherits user, we need to call it static. If we call self class, we're actually getting user instead of doctor or nurse. So let's call it static class. For the global scope na name, we can use the class name as well. So if at some point you want to run um, a query without the global scope, you can remove it by calling, by, by passing the fully qualified namespace for nurse or doctor. So let's go back and run this. Okay, now we only got doctors. Let's run nurses. Okay, cool. Um, let's clear this and let's try and create a doctor. Let's see where is it. So models doctor create. And we got a doctor back with the proper fully qualified namespace and everything works just as fine. Uh, if I call nurse, it doesn't work. If I call doctor, it works. So that's how you implement single table inheritance. Now, this is looking good. It works well, but there is a small thing that's not working. If I call user all, so I'm calling the parent, right? I don't get anything. And that's because of these. So when we call the user model, we need to have a way to fetch all of the, um, all of those instances. So what we can do is we can extract this and we just added it, but we can remove it and we can create a trait called something like, let's say child. So let's say namespace uh, models, trait child, and we can add this behavior. So we can go to doctor, use child, and we can go and say use child as well. Now let's try and run this. So we get all the users. If we get the doctor, we get the doctor. If we call the nurse, we don't get anything. So we got that working. But now we have one more issue. You see how when I called user all, I got an instance of user instead of doctor. So this one is a doctor and I should have gotten a doctor instance, but I got a user instance and that's a big issue depending on your app. So right now we have a single table inheritance implementation that works well if you're calling the doctor or the the nurse model separately. But if you call the user model, the, the parent model, it doesn't work properly. Now, the solution for this is a rather complicated one. So I'm going to leave this for a different video, but I'm going to leave um, two packages in the description that work super well for a single table inheritance on Laravel, and you can definitely use them. But I think it's important to watch this video. I could have, you know, just, I don't know, tweeted the package, but I think it's important to know how it works and how you can use it in different situations. And of course, the philosophy behind it. So let me know if you guys like this video. I'm going to release another one explaining how to return the proper instances when calling the parent model. But yeah, leave some comments. Let me know what you thought of it and what you'd like to see. And I see you on the next video. Bye-bye.